Chad's hope, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Mike here, and, and uh, I'm just going to let them feel free in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, I told he asked me how long. I said, here at Liberty, we're not on a time schedule. Amen. If it's 30 minutes, if it's three hours, Amen. it don't matter as long Amen. as the Lord's in it. Yes, it's all Amen. 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 And, uh, and church, we want to make them welcome. We want to love them this morning. <coughs> we can do that by being attentive. We can do that by praying for them this morning. And church, I know what they have to tell about what the Lord has done is great today. What God does is always great. Amen. So let's welcome them this morning. I'll just turn it over to you, brother. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor told me this was a friendly church and you've made a believer out of us all day. <laughs> we, we just really enjoyed it. I've heard many of the guys saying outside, what a pleasant atmosphere on the grounds of this church. It's such Lord. a wonderful, wonderful time already. And thank you for the invitation to come and share. Some of you are probably familiar with Chad's Hope Teen Challenge. It's a part of a Teen Challenge of Kentucky, which is a part of Teen Challenge USA. Uh, it's a Christian discipleship program. I know most people say it's a rehab. No, it's a Christian discipleship program for men uh, with alcohol and drug addictions. Men who want to overcome beat that problem. Amen. And you're going to hear some wonderful testimonies of some great guys. Here in just a minute, guys, you have become like sons to me and brothers. Uh, I have with me this morning one of our staff, Danny Simmons. He's a graduate of Teen Challenge, been working for the last three years with Teen Challenge. Two of our alumni are here this morning, Dean Jude and John Elliott. Uh, they're with us. They just want to be with the guys. and uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think you'll be blessed Bless when you Lord. hear what God's doing Thank you, uh, in these guys' lives. Uh, guys come from various places. I think most of our men are from Kentucky, a couple men from Tennessee, but they're from all over the state. Uh, guys, some come on their own, some come because some judge said you need to go. And uh, a lot of the guys will tell you that they came because they had the strong arm of the law shoving them over. But once they get in and they feel the love of God, hear the good news of Jesus Christ, yeah. They want to surrender their hearts Amen. and their lives Amen. and become soldiers for Jesus. And um, I don't know if you know the story of Chad's Hope. It started with some grants. Some property was donated in Clay County. Um, the federal government, you know, started investing in building drug treatment programs. And some of the pastors over in Clay County uh, were told that we would receive one in Clay County. And the pastors spoke to Congressman Rogers and other people and said, well, we're very grateful that you want to do that in Clay County, but whatever we do, uh, sir, needs to be faith-based. And they said, well, that might be a problem. Well, they came back and said, it's not a problem. It's going to be funded as one of the first works of the faith-based initiatives program. Amen. So we have a marvelous facility up Amen. in Clay County. Um, we're kind of like the rest of the body of Christ now. We're living by faith. The grants are gone. We're believing God and wonderful churches like yours and uh, concerned citizens, corporations, people are helping us to go forward uh, to see more and more men reach for Christ. We've graduated about 25 men in the last uh, 15 months from the entire program. It's 9 to 12 months in length. And uh, it's, we're about three a month now are finishing the course, going back out. John's uh, what, two weeks you've been out, John? Three weeks? And he lives in Barberville. Uh, uh, guys are working in various jobs. And God's good. Amen. 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 I've been a pastor in northern Kentucky for the last 16 years, and I resigned my church uh, in February to do this full time. So we're relocating. Uh, <coughs> these guys get in your heart, and I think you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. Uh, I think the best thing, they can say a whole lot more than a preacher can say, by their singing and by their testimonies. So would you join me in welcoming my friends from Chad's Hope Team Bless the Lord.
to Iraq. I'm an Iraq veteran myself, and I know that the Lord is with all those soldiers over there. And uh, for all our nation's faults, Amen. we are under his wing. Amen. 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 Um, the first song we're going to do, uh, our counselor, one of our counselors uh, always gets on us that, you know, nobody's really looking for God. God's looking for us. Bless and, you, Lord. Uh, I know he was looking for me. Probably all these guys too.
he tore my life apart with all that. You know, it took everything I had, my wife, my kids, all, all my possessions I ever had. You know, but but it took me coming to that point for me to realize that uh, God was all I needed. Yeah. You know, yeah. Because when I was laying there, you know, uh, by myself, you know, I, I realized that's all I needed because it's all I had. I mean, I'd every bridge I'd ever had. Uh, I've laid in jail. Uh, nowhere to turn. Uh, no one to even come see me. Didn't like nobody cared. But now I can look back, you know, how uh, God had his hand in all of this right here. Man. Bless him, Lord. You know, uh, I want to read scripture. It's about five verses long. But that's it's really good right here. I like it really well. This, this is a lot of Bible verses. Bless it's out of 2 Corinthians, what Paul said. So if it seems that we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we all have died for all life. Bless him, Lord. He died for everyone so that those who receive the new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone that belongs to Christ has become a new person. Bless the old life is gone and the new life is gone. Amen. Amen. And this all is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the task of re uh, reconciling people to him or reconciling to him. But you know, uh, I just thank God for everything that he's done. It took, it took me uh, slowing down and quit living a fast-paced life to come to Chad's home. But, you know, God's hand was in that through the court system and allowed me to be here. You know, uh, I tried to get out of it every way that I could. You know, uh, I didn't want to be there when I first got there. But now now God is working my life and allowed Jesus Christ to, to take root in my heart. You know, and, and for me to see what joy really is. You know, I always thought, you know, that it, that it was being happy due to my circumstances that was around me or who I was around and what I was doing. Now I get the joy out of seeing the things that God does. You know, Psalm 37, 4 says, Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. He's changed the desires of my heart. You know, to, to see the things that goes on, you know, the family's being restored, Bless the people Lord. getting saved. You know, that, that's the desires I, I, I want to see them, you know, and it's only through Jesus Christ that I can do that. You know? I just thank Him for so much that He's done. He's restored my family. You know, I, my wife, she comes around all the time now. I've got a relationship with my kids, you know, and I just thank God for all that he's done. Bless him, Lord. Yeah, I just thank God for letting us be here. You know, it's an honor just to get up here and talk about what the Lord has done. Bless you, Lord, for these guys. So I just thank you, God. Bless you, Lord. Amen.
Lord. I'd like to start out by telling you, I'm a safe raised, I'm 31, from Mark County, Kentucky. I was raised up in a good home. My mom and dad went to church. And when I turned 16, I was in love. I want to do my own thing. I've tried that for the last 15 years. I always got me in and out of jail. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've lost everything I've ever had. And about eight months ago, I got arrested and I was facing some time. And I just prayed for God to do what was right for me. If it meant to go to prison, just go to prison or rehab, whatever. And he put me in Chad's house. I got there, I, I had plans to just come for my three months of rehab and go back home and do my thing again. And Bless him, Lord. Getting there, I realized there's more to life than just myself. And, and I stayed in the first two or three months of it, and I finally got it. I just handed it over to God. And when I got saved in the last three months, I really got more out of it than I ever thought I would ever get. Bless, Bless him, Lord. Lord. I want to help the one that I've hurt back home. And I just want to do what's right. And Thank you, Lord. Raise my kids. I've got <coughs> wonderful kids. I need to get back to them and show them the right way to live. And I just want to thank the church for having us. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jason Petrie, I'm 36 years old. I grew up in Corbin. Um, I've come by this church a lot in my life, you know. And I grew up, uh, I would love to be able to sit up here and say I grew up in a bad home. I'd love to say I grew up in a home that uh, promoted drugs and promoted alcohol. And uh, But that's not the case. And that's not my story. I grew up in a good home. Um, I grew up in Central Baptist Church down on Main Street, or on Kentucky Street. Uh, my dad's an orthodontist here in Corbin. Bless um, him, Lord. You know, there's people here that I see out in the congregation that uh, that went to school with, that uh, their daughter went to daycare with my daughter. You know, I've known them for a long time. There's people here that knew me in high school. There's people here that knew me in grade school, middle school. You know, and um, you know, throughout the whole throughout my whole life, you know, there's always been something missing. And I never could figure out what that was. And through through school, when I was younger, it really didn't bother me that much. I knew it was there, but it didn't bother me that much. As I got into high school, things started to change a little bit. You know, and I wanted other things. I wanted popularity. I didn't care as much about church as long as I was popular. I didn't care about as much about God as long as uh, people paid attention to me. You know, as long as I had a girlfriend. As long as I was doing the things that uh, that made me happy, I didn't care about the rest of that stuff. I was I went from a into this physical realm where I wanted everything that the world had to offer. Bless him, Lord. And, um, and as far as the world goes, I've had about everything the world's had to offer. You know, I've had a lot in my life, and uh, and it just never filled this big hole that's been inside of me. You know, Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, for years, I wondered what in the world is wrong with me that, that I watch other people. I've seen other people that struggle with addiction, that struggle with alcoholism. I've seen them, I've seen them get better. I've seen them go on with their life, and I've seen them uh, prosper and be productive members of society and have families. And I thought, there's got to be something wrong with me that that, well, that doesn't happen to me. You know, 20 years of this is enough. You know, what is wrong with me? And so, uh, but I never thought that it could be God. I never ever thought that it could be Jesus, you know, working in my life. I thought it had to be, there's got to be some miracle cure out there that I've just missed. Bless him, Lord. There was a miracle cure. I was yeah. looking in the wrong place. Yeah. 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 Amen. And, uh, Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's the truth, brother. Amen. I got up this morning, and, uh, I've, got I got up this morning and uh, I've got a devotional. It's called Grace for the Moment. And, and I read every morning, and uh, the day's title was Wrestling with God. I thought, this ought to be interesting. And in Genesis 32, 28, it says, Your name will now be Israel because you have wrestled with God and with the people, and you have won. Still thought, let's, let's see what it's getting at. It says, The word Jabbok in Hebrew means wrestle. And wrestle is what Jacob did. He wrestled with his past 
All the white lies, the scheming, the scandalizing, he wrestled with his situation, a spider trapped in his own web of deceit and craftiness. But more than anything, he wrestled with God. Jacob wrestled with God the entire night on the banks of Jabbok. He rolled in the mud of his mistakes. He made God face to face, sick of his past and in desperate need of a fresh start. And because Jacob wanted so badly, God honored his determination. God gave him a new name and a new promise. But he also gave him a wrench tip as a reminder of that mysterious night at the river. Amen. And, uh, and that's, what, uh, that's what's happened for 36 years. I've been wrestling with God, you know. And he keeps beating me beating me down and I keep wondering what happened, you know, and I just, you know, you just never give in and so some things happened last summer and uh, I ended up in Knox County Detention Center and I, my head was still spinning and I thought, how in the world have I ended up here? And, uh, and I was mad, I was angry, I was scared, I didn't like the circumstances, I didn't like anything, but all through this 20 year journey and this hole that's just gotten bigger and deeper and, and I've just kept digging. You know, there's been lines that I've said I'll never cross, and I keep crossing. You know, yeah. I started out it started out with alcohol and, and minor drugs, and it ended up to, you know, intravenous drug use, and and you know, going to the to the depths of hell. You know, and uh, yes, him Lord. And so, you know, I was sitting in jail, and I'm going, you know, what's going on? And and uh, the judge, Judge Chapel, gave me some options, and I didn't like any of them, but. Uh, but there was a couple other treatment centers I could go to, and there was, was Chad's Hope. It's long term, longer than I want to go, and you know I'm not sure about this faith-based stuff anymore. And you know uh, I just don't know what to do. So I tried other options. And God, I kept wrestling. He kept putting me in a submission hold and pushing me back where he wanted me to go. And so I ended up in Chad's Hope, mad, scared, upset. The world didn't want to be there, and. Uh, Something happened there. These guys, these guys, God works through people in the weirdest yes. ways. Yes. <laughs> he puts people in your life that you go, I, I have nothing in common with that person. <laughs> and, then he, and then you go, wow, you know, what happened there? But uh, but he puts these guys in my life and, they, and, he's, and he works through them and he works through the staff. And, and you know, it's just an opportunity that I never have had anywhere else. And I never had the opportunity to let Amen. God to sit, sit still and let God come in and do his thing. Amen. Amen. You know, it's always been about me trying to push this way or push that way instead of saying, okay, God, I'm going to take the next step. You figure out what's happening, what's going to happen. Amen. And uh, there's one other verse I've got in here uh, that I want to read before I... I love this verse. Psalm 30, I love it too, but... Uh, but this one, Psalm 18, it's... Uh, Bless him, Lord. I get in this Old Testament, man. These people are like me. These people are wild in Old hey, Testament. Man. You know, I thought, that, hey, I thought man. there ain't no way this Bible relates to me. Read the Old Testament hey, man. These people, they were wild. <laughs> it's like I was telling somebody, you know, they took those Israelites. Moses was coming to God and takes them out of, out of Egypt, out of bondage. They got an 11-day hike across the valley. It took them 40 years. That's me. You know, I don't know how long my walk would have been, but it's been 20 years. Uh, but, uh, Psalms 18, this one's for you too. Psalms 18, verse 4 says, The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress, and I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Bless him, Lord. And then it says in six and eighteen or sixteen, it says he reached down from on high and took a hold of me. Amen. He pulled me out of deep waters. He yeah. rescued me yeah. from my powerful yeah. enemy. Amen. Amen. And from those who hated me. They confronted me in the day of my distress, but the Lord was my support. He Amen. brought me out to a wide open place. Thank you, Lord. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's what it's all about today. Amen. 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 That's why he wants them to do it, because he is a loving God. Amen. 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 That's right. well, thank you all so much for letting us come today. That's it's been such a blessing. Amen. 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 Amen.
Ladies Center in Louisville. There's another Ladies Center up in Louisa. And there's centers for boys and girls under the age of 18 in other areas of the nation. So uh, God's got an answer to this drug problem. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Amen. 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 I, uh, if you have your Bible, I'd like to read just a moment from the book of Romans, chapter number 1. Seth confirmed to me that I was on the right track this morning with his comments, and I'm grateful, Seth, that you were obedient to the Lord. Romans chapter number 1. By the way, would it be all right if at the end they sing one more? Would that be yes. Right? Yes. Amen. 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 We'll do it. Romans chapter 1, and uh, verse number 14 is where I'd like to begin reading. He says... I'm a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Amen. for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also you know, at, uh, at uh, Chad's Hope, we don't talk a lot about drugs. We talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. The men are in classes from four to five hours a day, chapel. Uh, they're, they're memorizing scripture, doing character studies, Bible essays, going through various courses on temptation, attitudes, obedience to God, obedience to man. Uh, many of you have probably heard the name David Wilkerson before. He was the author of the book, Cross and the Switchblade. He just went to be with the Lord about two weeks ago. He used to say, we give him God in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, and the Holy Ghost at night. Amen. Amen. And that's really what happens at Teen Challenge. You know, most of the staff are, are former addicts of one type or another, but all of us, all of us were lost in sin. Amen. 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 Every last one of us. Bless and him, Lord. As Paul said, therefore we are debtors. That's right. Yeah. Bless him, Lord. And that includes you if you're a believer this morning. Amen. We're a debtor to God right. and a debtor to man, Amen. to all people. Uh, he, he, he talks about the intellectuals, if you will, the Greeks and the barbarians, which would be the heathen. We're debtors to the down and outers and to the up and outers. Amen. We have a call from God as believers to take this good news to every creature. Man. And uh, we're, you've seen this morning some results of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the work of God. We're called to the whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. I know some of you might have met these men six months or a year ago, but there's no hope for that one. You just seen me about 30 years ago. You just said that I used to almost look like Charles Manson. Bless Jesus you, works miracles. Yeah, man. Amen. Hasn't changed a bit. He's still working. I was reading a book recently by Dr. Mark Rutland, and uh, he tells a story about an elderly couple who was raising their grandson. They raised him actually from his infancy because his daddy was killed in an automobile accident, and mommy disappeared and went off. So they took him in and raised him. And, you know, as the, boy, the men have already described through adolescence, it gets pretty wild. Bless you, Lord. And, uh, Grandma and Grandpa got nothing but rebellion and ungratefulness, blah, blah, blah. And like a good preacher, Brother Rutland says, one day I had about all I could take. And he said, I took that boy to task. So I took him and, and said to him, son, do you realize if, if you could have been a ward of the state, you could have been in an orphanage, and, but your grandma and your grandpa changed your diapers, they fed you, they cared for you, and great sacrifice, blah, 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 and he went on, and the boy said, I've considered all those things before preacher. He said, what am I supposed to do? Every day of my life say thank you? And Dr. Rutland says, yes, absolutely yes. Amen. Amen. And that's what Paul's saying to us that's here in the right. book of Romans. Yeah. We are debtors, and every yeah. day of our life, our life should be saying thank that's you. Right. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for what you've done right. for Amen. my soul. Yeah. And, uh, we express that thanks by the way we live and the, the people that we minister to. Bless the Lord. The, we, we see somebody and you know there's times God will say, you stop and speak to that person and we don't want to do it. 
But the Holy Spirit say, I'm dealing with that heart. Would you be my voice? Would you be my hand extended, reaching out to this soul that's oppressed today? Um, you know, we have a divine mandate. We have a great commission. We have a holy calling. We are debtors of the, of the Lord, and we're debtors to all people. To tell the story. I mean, some of these guys, you can tell, they're a little nervous, <coughs> but they're very grateful Amen. for Amen. what Amen. God has done for them. Thank you, Lord. I mean, there are probably someday somebody would have said of you and I, there's no hope for that one, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus loves us. This I know for the Bible. tells me. my Christ. I was thinking also, uh, and I'll just read this and not trouble you to turn there, but many of you probably know the scripture. Uh, Paul makes it clear in the Gospels that it's not some <coughs> slick thing he was doing from place to place. He wasn't uh, spinning wisdom with people. He let them know very emphatically, and I'm reading 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1. He says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, Amen. not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be no should effect. be made of none effect. Yeah. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Yeah. Amen. Verse 21 says, after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God <laughs> by the foolishness of preaching to save Amen. them that believe. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, well, I, I bet if we if we added it up, these guys have been through a hundred different treatment programs. I mean, I hear guys say, I've been through nine, I've been through twelve, but they've come to Jesus. Amen. 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 And Jesus makes the change. Amen. And Jesus makes the difference. And back in the Praise text the that I started with this morning, real simply, he says, I am not ashamed, Amen. but rather I'm thankful. Yeah. I'm honored. I'm proud to be a Christian. I'm grateful for the grace of Almighty God. That's right. What a privilege it is to be a transition from death to life. Amen. From the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God's dear Son. He says, I am not ashamed. Uh, he says, of the gospel of Christ. It's the good news. It's the message of life. It's so simple. This gospel of Jesus Christ. He says... Uh, it's the, if you will, it's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Paul gave up everything to have Jesus. That's he said, right. I count it all I've done. I'm hearing these men say this more and more. I'm giving it all up. I've got a new purpose and a new reason. Thank you, it. Lord. It's yeah. about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's about Him crucified. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about abundant life. It's, it's about Him. It's about the Lord. My life is no longer my I am bought with a Christ. And therefore, I'm going to glorify God Amen. with my body Thank you, and Lord. my spirit, which are God's. Um, I want to say, uh, as a staff, I'm the director and other staff, I think we can safely all say we make no claims to the success in the transformation of these lives. Like the psalmist said, not unto us, but unto your name. Amen. 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 It's Lord. the work of Almighty That's God. That's the truth, brother. It's not Amen. us at all. Uh, um, Sometimes people kind of try to almost, I know they mean well, but they almost flatter you saying, oh, you're all doing such a good work. But I, I have to lovingly say, without him, we can do nothing. That's right. Amen. 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 It's, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and um, we're just like it says in the book of Corinthians, we are just crack pots or earthen vessels. And uh, the men say it often. Chad's hope's a vessel. It's a place where... The, the Lord uses to facilitate His work in their lives. I want to thank you all for praying for the, the, the generation that's bound in drugs. Yeah. Some are coming out. I believe there's a, a whole bunch coming out real soon. Thank Amen. you, Lord. I believe people are getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Amen. And let's not give up hope. You've seen that God can do it. Amen. Amen. Let's believe God for uh, many, many more this coming year. He says... I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. salvation right. If I could add to that, deliverance and freedom. Yeah. The gospel is the power of God. That's right. It's a life-changing message. It transforms, it cleanses, it heals, it restores, and it liberates. Bless the Lord. We've got witnesses all over this room of the amazing grace of God. And I just want to say today, I don't know... You know, where, where you came 
from or what you're going through today, Jesus still saves. Amen. Amen. Jesus still heals and He still delivers. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yep. And uh, finally, He says, uh, "This it is the God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believes." Yep. I would like to encourage you today if. Something has been stirred within you. Step out and believe. Amen. And yeah. receive the power of God Amen. to change your life. Yeah. It's not about men. It's about Jesus. That's right. Amen. Church, I thank you this morning for letting us come and share our hearts. I'm going to have the men close, yes, Pastor, yes, with sir. amazing yes. grace. And let's, let's worship the Lord. And if you know it, join in and sing with us. Amen. Amen.
Christ died that we could live. Amen? Amen. I'm gonna add, I've asked them to come and sing this song, Is It Well With Your Soul? Amen. And as these men have come and, and they have ministered, I, I have no other words except to use Eddie Warfield's words. We have experienced a spiritual event this week. Amen. God has Amen. been in the house. And I know that he has dealt with hearts. The most amazing thing, though, is the testimonies that God's power yeah. is still transforming yeah. lives. Amen. And what he has done for these men, he has done for me. Amen. What he has done for me, he will do for you. That's right. Amen. But you've got to accept it. You've yeah. got to come. Yeah. And as they sing this song, Is It Well With Your Soul?, I, I like for every head to be bowed this morning, every heart praying. I want you to examine yourself this morning, Christian and lost person alike. Just for a moment, is it well with your soul? Is everything all right with you today? If it's not, then you need to come to this altar this morning. You need to come and pray. There's freedom in the house of the Lord. There's freedom in Christ this morning. And freedom begins with you accepting what Jesus Christ has done for you. He died on a cross so that you could live. Amen? Amen. I can't add or take away a thing that these men have shared with us this morning. They've hit it right square on the head of the nail. Jesus Christ will transform your life if you put your faith and your hope in Him. As they sing this morning, will you come? If God's knocking on your heart, will you just step out? by faith this morning and to see what Christ has to offer. morning and you're lost. Every head's bowed. Everybody's praying. If you're here and you're lost. The Lord's knocking on your heart. Would you just raise your hand up? Just put it right back down. Just acknowledge it to the Lord that God's talking to you today. Will you do that? You're here this morning and you're not walking where you ought to be this morning, Christian. Will you raise your hand today? You just acknowledge today you're not where you need to be with the Lord. Will you do that? This morning, church all over the house, lost people and Christians this morning have raised their hand. So I'm going to ask to you right now, what shame is there to come and accept the Lord this morning? What shame is there to come and be saved today? There's no shame in it. Jesus Christ took all the shame to the cross. Upon that, He bared His stripes that you and I could be saved. I tell you what, today the only shame that you experience is if you leave here in the shape you came in. If you leave here today without accepting the goodness and the gift of Christ, there's shame in that today. God came to save that which was lost. He came that you could live this morning. And here He's ministered unto you tomorrow. Won't you come and pray? Won't you just step out by faith this morning? Oh, it doesn't matter that there's a big crowd here today. It doesn't matter that there's a lot here. All that matters is between you and Christ this morning. Will you come? If you need to pray, will not you come? Just come and pray this morning. Church, we got those on the altar that need prayer. Will y'all come pray with them this morning? Thank you, Lord. How about it today? Well, with my Church, I'll tell you what, the Lord is moving. This morning, if you need to pray, won't you come to this altar and pray? How powerful the Spirit of God is when He's in the house. If you need to pray, just come. I'm going to ask you if you pray with me this morning. Lord, Father, I thank you so much for what we've done in our hearts today. And God, I know that you're dealing with hearts and lives. God, I know that you're affecting the own hearts. Lord, I pray, God, this morning. 
that we would just be obedient unto your voice. God, unto that still, small voice this morning, God. And, Father, that you do. God, that they would step out. God, that they give them the strength and the courage this morning. God, Father, to see, Lord, the great gift that you've offered. We thank you all this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Last person, you know why it's so hard for you to get saved? You know why it's so hard for you to come this altar this morning? Because you're going to have to die out to yourself today. Death is a hard thing. It comes with a sting, amen? But through Jesus Christ, He removes the sting of death. If you will step out and die out of your sin this morning, Jesus Christ will resurrect you in His love and in His perfect way today. All you have to do is come. Will you come this morning? And the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well. Is it well with you today? Church, I tell you what, my heart is satisfied. The Lord has come in here, and what has needed to be done has been done. Amen. But I tell you what, I'm not satisfied with. I'm not satisfied that you're you've done everything that you need to do if you're here and you lost. God's knocked at your heart, and this morning, you know, uh, you've heard the gospel. You've heard the truth this morning. Amen. In an instant, in the blink of an eye, when you will humble yourself before Christ, He'll save you. Amen. He'll save you. Today, I, I, you know, the Lord's going to, he's going to, he's going to keep knocking at your heart and the devil's going to turn the TV on. He's going to, he's going to bombard you with everything he can. Yeah. But if you'll listen to that still small voice, if you'll humble yourself, he can save you in your car, he can save you next to your bed, he can save you on the way to work. Amen. God will do it, but you've got to humble yourself unto it. Right. Church, this morning, have you enjoyed Chad's Hope today? Yeah. <laughs> Six o'clock, so come on back and be in service with us. Men, I need to visit with you about five o'clock today concerning our fellowship hall. This morning, I'm going to ask the church to indulge me just for a moment. And Chad Tobe, I'm going to ask you all if you all just come line this whole front. Just come right here and make a big line. And church, here's what I want to do. I want to sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And if you got something you want to tell them, I want you to come up here and I want you to love them. I want you to tell them you're going to pray for them. I want you to testify to them. I want you to just tell them that they're welcome here, and I want you to pray for them this morning. I want you to just come out here to fellowship. we got plenty of time. Fellowship one with another, but I want you to come around and tell them how much they've been helping to us this morning. Amen. I don't mean to interrupt Keith, but it would take me forever to talk to each one of them individually. But I have just blessed with that. Amen. And I don't know these men for anybody. But I'm so proud of you and for what you stand for. Bless your Lord. Amen.
Father, it's our Amen. The church will be here for you. I'll be here for you. And live for you. But just remember, you've got to break all them ties from your so called friends. And you put up. Even if you have to move. I've moved. I, I live. I'm a play town. Born and raised. And I live. Because I know that knock on that door and that one guy walks through that door. Hey, man, let's go get drunk. Because it's too easy. But you know who will help you. We'll pray for you every day. God bless every one of us. As Nancy has already said, and uh, she kind of beat me to the punch there, I was going to ask Norman and, and uh, Brother uh, Harry if they take the offering plate. We're going to do a love offering. After you fellowship with them and you shake hands, uh, as they take the offering plates to the back, just set them there. If you'd like to give something to Chad's Hope this morning, just drop it in that offering plate. And we'll make sure that they get it, okay? Amen. Church, let's come around now and let's fellowship with these uh, these young men. Tell them how much we appreciate them, how much we love them. Oh, how we love Jesus. Yeah, I know you're <laughs> 